Hi, and welcome to XR for Work. This is the show where we explore the immersive, virtual, and augmented platforms designed for business and professional use. My name is Rick, and I'm your host here at XR for Work. Now, at XR for Work, we've done most of our platform hopping using the Oculus Quest. While Oculus has the hottest platform at the moment, it's certainly not the only. And with new hardware on the horizon from HTC, DECA, and others, it's certainly looking like it's going to be an exciting year ahead for hardware. Additionally, we recently got to experience the launch of Microsoft Mesh. With promises to merge the physical world and the virtual ones on the Microsoft Mesh platform. And so with that, I fired up my Windows laptop, updated my software and my drivers, broke out my HP Reverb G2, plugged it in and started to refamiliarize myself with the Windows Mixed Reality platform. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. I found myself drawn down the rabbit hole and went back time and time again. I fired up Medal of Honor above and beyond and really saw the noticeable difference I uh, hadn't noticed in the graphics when I played it the first time through on my Quest 2. Also, having my desktop and all my apps available to me was quite nice. And in the higher resolution available via the G2, text was clear and crisp and the voice recognition worked better than I remembered. Could Windows Mixed Reality really prove to be that much overlooked productivity platform sitting right there under our noses? Well, let's take a look. But first, don't forget to stop by our Facebook group, the XR for Work group, and join in on the discussion uh, regarding productivity, meeting, training, and education in XR. We have lots of very interested and involved members, developers, platform owners, users, and enthusiasts who would uh, love to engage in discussions with you. Follow our Twitter account at XR for Work. Uh, email us at XR for Work at gmail.com. And uh, say hi over in LinkedIn to Rick Castillo and Nicholas Johansson, who are the partners at XR for Work. And with that, let's dive in to Windows Mixed Reality and let's get started. And so Windows Mixed Reality is a platform that really lives and exists on every Windows device that's, that's sold. It's a part of the Windows uh, system install on a PC and also runs on their HoloLens platform as the exclusive Windows uh, interface. Now, when you plug in your Windows Mixed Reality device or a Windows Mixed Reality uh, compatible device, um, Windows Mixed Reality starts up on the desktop or the laptop in my case, and kind of takes over the user interface in terms of what it's feeding the user through the headset. And so when you plug in, what you'll notice, and this is my desktop just today as I was doing some recording, um, I plug my G2 in and you'll notice this blue bar come across the top of your screen that says, Win plus Y to use the desktop of the or instead of the headset. And you can see the outline in red, which is uh, the Windows Mixed Reality screen. Um, and Windows is intercepting all the input coming from uh, the, the HMD connected, the controllers, and feeding that through the Windows operating system and executing controls and commands. So there's nothing really extra that you need to go out and get or, or buy in order to make Windows Mixed Reality work with a Windows Mixed Reality headset. And this is just a close up of that message, when, why to use the desktop instead of the headset. Because again, it's doing that interpretation between controller input 
and mouse and keyboard input. And it's also restricting the area of the screen, depending on your resolution, to that portion of the screen that uh, the Windows Mixed Reality uh, uh, output is being shown on. And this is the Windows Mixed Reality menu. Once you're in the headset and you have your controller and you have a Windows menu button on each controller, you press that to get here to your interface for interfacing with um, all your controls, your settings, and your applications. And you can see that not only with the pinned apps that are on the front of, of the menu, you can also go and dig into even your legacy um, apps on your PC and pull them up, you know, whether it's the calculator, the camera, um, just about anything on your PC, uh, you can bring a window into to mixed reality and, and run it. Now, I will give you the caveat that I did run into some issues with some applications trying to run them in, in Windows Mixed Reality, but for the most part, uh, over 95% of the things that I, I launched ran flawlessly, and I was able to uh, perform input and manage and control them from within Windows Mixed Reality. So again, this is software that's natively built into Windows 10. And, and I am talking about recent Windows 10. If we're not talking about Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1 or even very early Windows 10. This is modern up-to-date 2021 Windows 10. Um, it will be there if you have the hardware to run uh, Windows Mixed Reality. And it's native. Again, you're not going out and buying anything else. Um, it, when you uh, plug in your headset, if it's not there, it will go and download it, um, or you can go download it independently and make it part of your Windows install. Now it supports all Windows Mixed Reality devices. Now I have three devices listed here, the Vive, Cosmos, and Elite, the HP Reverb G2, which I used um, in this particular case, and for all the capture that you're gonna see here during our uh, our exploration today, and the Microsoft HoloLens, which is a different case altogether. So I'm not even um, uh, dealing with the HoloLens today, right? Which they call the true mixed reality device um, because it is a, a uh, category in and of itself. I don't have a HoloLens, so I really can't speak to it. I think I've tried one twice. Um, it's, it's very fascinating and in interesting, but at 35, $100, uh, a little out of my price range. Um, and then there's all, so those are the three devices you will find if you go to the Microsoft store online and look up uh, Windows Mixed Reality. But there are a whole bunch of other legacy Windows Mixed Reality devices from the Samsung Odyssey to a Dell to a Lenovo. Um, I think there is an Acer, right? There's probably a half a dozen or more legacy uh, mixed reality devices that that would still work with today's uh, Windows mixed reality. You won't have the field of view, the, the, the uh, resolution and the clarity and the controlling because all of those legacy ones had two cameras, older control controllers and uh, a controller tracking system. So uh, probably not the greatest experience and, and probably hurt Windows mixed reality very early on. Um, as, as VR was kind of starting its renaissance uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, the core environment is the mixed reality portal. And that's the environment that we will take you through. Um, so when you plug your headset in again, it fires up the mixed reality portal and drops you in uh, the Windows Cliff House. And again, we're gonna take a quick tour of that. The, min window, the mixed reality portal makes Windows aware of VR controls. So it, it's sitting there and interpreting, you know, screen clicks and the arrow or, or the laser pointer, the grabbing of things and manipulating of things back to the Windows uh, UI. And then it uh, accesses desktop and applications from within the Windows mixed reality portal. And so when you fire up, edge or you fire up an application from within Windows. Windows knows 
to feed it through uh, mixed reality and not the desktop. Um, and then it also understands to a degree the input mechanisms that you're using and how they're different than, than a keyboard and a mouse. And then really key to uh, the utilization and I think um, value to Windows Mixed Reality is that you can launch applications that are available and run through Steam um, or Viveport, which also integrates with Steam, right from within Windows Mixed Reality. So you know, all those games, all those applications that are on those platforms are available and can be run from within the um, Windows Mixed Reality portal. And again, we'll, we'll show examples of that. And so what, what can you do with, with Windows Mixed Reality? Why would I want to use that instead of Oculus? Well, like, you know, one of the big things is you, can, you have immediate access to your PC. And when you use a platform like Oculus, you know, you, you would get a third party software that you pay for, um, most of them with monthly fees. Um, they put a application on your desktop or your laptop, and then through uh, the network or the internet, you're able to connect back to that and show your, your PC screen and your applications and, and leverage them from, from within a head mounted display. Right, so, so there is a third party app that, that sits between uh, the Oculus headset and your laptop and brings those screens and does that manipulation um, and input into the Windows UI. Um, so in many cases, they're trying to do what Windows Mixed Reality does. But Windows Mixed Reality, like I said, is, is kind of within the guts of Windows already, is already there. You're not paying anything extra for it. Um, you can customize your space. And so again, I can't help but keep going back and, and making the comparisons to Oculus. But in Oculus, you get you know, these very nice home areas that you can um, change out. And you know, they have eight, nine, or 10, um, but you, you cannot customize that space. You can't change it. You can't alter it in any way. And in the Windows Mixed Reality homes, um, it's all very much everything except the, the architecture of the space you can customize to your heart's content, content bringing in 3D objects and, and uh, screens and um, uh, tools uh, as much as you want. Um, you can display your desktop, right? And that's huge. This is one of the things that I look for in almost every platform and application that's uh, geared towards productivity because all my productivity, at least up till this stage, has been with my desktop and still is, right? I'm still very tied to, you know, that office ecosystem and I need my PowerPoint and I need my Word and I need my Adobe and I need my browser to get my work done. And so being able to access those things within the head mounted display and work on them more efficiently is the thing that I'm looking for. Now, eventually, you know, we'll get to different user interfaces and different ways of getting work done in 3D. And, and that will be a very exciting time. But while we're in this migration and this transition, the fact remains, I still have to get to those 2D assets. Um, I can access your phone, you know, the Your Phone app. I've talked about this on this channel before um, and, and methods to bring in my phone um, into uh, VR so that I can uh, see those messages or respond to those. Uh, alerts from my phone um, without having to necessarily take my headset off. I can run all my apps, my office, my OneNote, my sticky notes. These are things, that, again, I use day in and day out to get work done. And again, having them in the headset really boosts that productivity. Um, you can access Edge and WebXR, uh, Edge, uh, whatever your feelings about it, right? Is that built-in browser again within Windows? It is a web XR compatible and aware, and will run 360 videos, web XR applications natively, again, right from within Windows Mixed Reality. Um, it has voice navigation and dictation. This is huge. Again, from an efficiency perspective, voice navigation and dictation is something that uh, is, again, something I always look for in these head mounted displays because I, I believe that along with other um, input mechanisms that it is going to be the uh, 
um, input of the future. Um, you can take pictures and videos right from within, as I did all these pics and videos that you'll be seeing during this, uh, this exploration episode. Um, you can access the flashlight. They call it the flashlight, but it's the pass through. And what it does is it will pass through uh, the cameras into your real environment, um, kind of using your, your controller like you might hold a flashlight hence the word, and giving you the circular view of your surroundings. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, then you can import and manipulate 3D objects. And this goes with the customization piece. And again, we'll give you uh, a demonstration of that and what that means. And then again, launching into Steam and, and Viveport apps. I have a lot of apps in Steam. I have a Viveport membership. So the fact that I can uh, launch these applications and get to all of those tools and games uh, from right within Windows Mixed Reality kind of makes it a, a very cool, unique jumping off point, right? It's, it's Geneva, it's Switzerland, it will play with anybody. And so why not start there and take advantage of all the other uh, uh, things that we've talked about that you're able to access and leverage. So again, content, You've got everything that's in the Windows Store and the desktop. Now, admittedly, the Windows Store is, uh, it's not the first place you're gonna go look for things. There's a, a couple of things in there that might be of interest, um, but the, the main content's gonna be right from your desktop. You know, if it's running on your desktop, you've got it and you can access it. Then things through Steam, things through Viveport, and then even through um, using Revive, uh, this third party app, uh, allows you to run things in the Oculus store. This is not something that I've tried yet. You know, I have a, a Quest kind of sitting right beside me. Um, so I haven't kind of had that need to go do that. But if you were deciding on a specific platform, it would be good to know that, hey, you're not locked out necessarily of, of everything in the Oculus store and that there is an option to go and run um, um, those Oculus applications via that, that program called Revive. All right, so these are just some of the things that I've done, um, again, in my exploration. We're not gonna go over every single one of these, so, so don't worry about that. I just wanted to give you kind of a view, you know, I, I've launched and went into AltSpace. Now, Microsoft owns AltSpace, so that just makes sense. And you'll notice that when we go into the uh, Cliff House, uh, very prominently displayed right in front is a big 3D uh, uh, um, <laughs> object that will let you launch and go right into your alt space uh, account. Uh, vSpatial, that's an application we've talked about here before. vSpatial exists in Oculus. It's also in Steam. So in that it's in Steam, I can run vSpatial through Windows Mixed Reality. Virtual desktop, also in Oculus, also in Steam. I can run it on uh, or through Windows Mixed Reality. Big screen, also in Oculus, also in Steam. I can run it through Windows Mixed Reality. Noda, uh, a mind mapping app that I just, uh, I, I just love being in and working in. And um, it's got a Steam version and an Oculus version. It's not in the Oculus store yet. Um, but you can find it on SideQuest and soon to be in the Oculus Store. Collab Hub, a VR whiteboard. And uh, what I really like about Collab Hub is every application, you know, productivity applications kind of gives you a whiteboard. And drawing in VR has never been a pleasant experience. I don't draw well when I'm at a real whiteboard. Um, and Collab Hub gives you this nice palette so that when I wanna make a square, it looks like a square and a circle, it looks like a circle and an oval looks like an oval and a triangle looks like a triangle. And I can do very nice um, uh, whiteboards using Collab Hub. And you have utilities like HollowSwitch will allow you to display your phone in Windows Mixed Reality. I, I've already gotten my phone connected through the Your Phone app, so I kind of do it that way, but this is just another option. And then an app like Overlay, which will allow all your Discord notifications. If you're a heavy Discord user or um, using it for a platform that you have to respond to promptly, you might find um, something like Overlay useful. 
Uh, there's Engage, which again, you can get in Steam. You can also download it directly from Engage on your desktop. And again, launch into it from Windows Mixed Reality. And then you've got Gravity Sketch, you've got Google. This is just, you know, uh, uh, 10 or 12 apps that, that I was able to very quickly, easily get up and running and going that I've also used in my quest that to give a sense that, you know, Windows Mixed Reality does have a reach a rich ecosystem in that it can, it can access all these tools through Viveport, Steam, and uh, just about any other methodology, the web um, that you might want to, to try. All right, so with that, let's jump in. Now this is um, Windows Mixed Reality Cliffhouse. And when you come in, you're kind of immediately kind of uh, on this uh, uh, outside, airy, large um, structure. You can see you can move through it. You've got these kind of sectioned off areas. And the stuff that you're seeing, I've customized there. So, you know, I've got my, my weather app here. And, and, and then I have all these other screens that I have post. This is kind of my work room, I've decided. Um, you can see these, you know, it's kind of a science fiction setting that you've got these floaty islands out. And then you've got this uh, deck or platform here that you can look out of. You can't jump off, you can't, you know, move out. Now, this is, uh, I, I thought something unique is that they have a 3D viewer as one of the items here on the Rick mixed reality menu. And I put that up on the wall so that at any given time, if I want to customize something, within the Windows Mixed Reality Home. I, I usually go up here to the wall and I might search for something. And this is my, my dog, you know, this is Chewy. I have a real dog, Chewy. So I have a dog, Chewy, uh, here in, in Windows Mixed Reality. And I can uh, invoke him, pull that 3D object in. He, he, uh, he actually has an animation and a sound that I can run. You can kind of see him here. He'll beg, he'll bark, he'll, you know, pant. And then with all of these 3D objects, you, you have this capability, you can do what's called follow. So I click follow and then Chewy will um, kind of attach himself to me. And wherever I go, I'll put him over here to the side so he's not floating in front of me. Um, Chewy goes with me so I can look down at any point and Chewy's right there just like in real life. And, and this is just, uh, now we're going into, you know, kind of the gaming um, video room. And, you know, again, it's just a 3D structure. And obviously they have the, the Microsoft movie and TV store here. You could fire, fire this up. Of course, a nice big space. Um, if we go out here a little bit and there's this little control on the wall. And if you click it, the sky will go night. So you're like, it's at the big, your own personal drive-in theater. And, and even that sign that's up here on the wall, right? That space pirate trainer floating over there on the right. I could take that off. I could put something else there. There's Chewy. And then we'll go over here again. And that room's the productivity area. And then out here I have the games. You can see alt space, like I had said. And then you have these platforms that you can follow that take you kind of to the, you might call it the roof, but it's just really another large platform area where you could, again, bring in any 3D object. You could put your movie room up here, <laughs> you know? So there's, uh, this is the uh, Skyloft room or the Skyline room. And we'll go and look at that uh, a little bit later, but I can jump to this other uh, 3D area that I could customize if I like it better. You know, this is nature and mountains. And you'll see when we go to the Skyloft that it's, you know, a harbor and a city. Um, so a little bit different feel. Um, so that's kind of the cliff house. And so, so within the cliff house, you know, I have my work area. And then in the work area, I have all these screens that I can surround myself with. Now, this particular screen is, you know, it's the photo apps from my Windows desktop. And I can uh, call up a particular set of photos. In this case, it's a trip I took with my wife and son and daughter-in-law and grandkids. And uh, we had went on uh, a cruise ship and um, oh, I was trying to pull that back. And I, I can have that slideshow running there in my room. You know, it's, it's like a really big, nice slideshow. 
Um, and we'll go over here to this section and I have, you know, edge up here. And again, you know, these screens in your, in your HMD look, uh, they're big, they're bright. You can see the text very, very clearly, even in this recording. And I think this is one of the advantages that until you actually utilize a device like a HP Reverb 2, where you have that uh, higher resolution and sense of clarity, you can really, really see how um, uh, clear this is. Uh, and, and that just makes work that much more pleasant. Your eyes don't get quite as tired and uh, it's, just, it's just easier. Um, I have all my, my controls here so I can you know, adjust the um, size you know, to suit me well. And I'm just kind of showing you some navigation. So again, you know, uh, Windows Mixed Reality is taking over the desktop. So on my desktop, uh, you probably wouldn't even see the browser running because it's intercepting that and sending it to, to the headset. I've got my OneNote for Windows over here. And this is a document that I've, I've just been playing around with because one of the things that I found was that within Windows Mixed Reality, I can pull up content and I can actually uh, you know, do a little research in the browser, pull up information. I can select that. Uh, I think this is actually a, an example of that. Um, I think I'm gonna go to the support page and I'm just you know, actually just trying to find a little bit of text that uh, would be a good example. I'll go down, I think, to Oculus for Business and you know, just navigating around and hurry up, Rick, let's pick something. Getting started. See, I'm, I'm just trying to find some text here. Here we go. So you know, I can pull my trigger and I can, you know, again, Windows Mixed Reality is, is interpreting, hey, he's using a, a controller. So when he pulls and holds that trigger, you know, give him these handles and I can cut and paste that text out of the browser over here into my OneNote notes. And just like it would on your desktop, right? I get the, the text, yeah, there's Chewy still there, hey Chewy. You know, we, we cut and pasted, so let's, let's celebrate Chewy. Okay. <laughs> so we've got Chewy there. And then I can bring up my uh, uh, menu wherever I am with one of the controller buttons. And I can get to any of these applications that I might want um, to use. So uh, let's say Glue, which is a uh, 3D meeting uh, platform that's installed on my desktop, right? I can bring that up and um, I can actually launch it uh, if I wanted to here. But in this particular case, all I'm going to do is actually uh, take the, uh, the application and kind of size it and put it on this other wall. So it's, again, one of those applications that I might want to launch. And you'll notice that as you cursor over or, or take your controller laser and you go over a window, you might see that little sleeping symbol, right? Which means this app's asleep. And so obviously, Windows is kind of managing the number of open windows that it's feeding into, uh, into mixed reality at any, any given point. So it will put the browser to sleep. It will put OneNote to sleep as I'm working on, on something else in order to manage those resources. Windows is doing that for you, again, just like it does on your desktop. And so in this particular case, I think I'm going to open up another uh, productivity app. Um, and, and all my apps are available here uh, through this Windows menu. Um, so yep, there's Nota, right? So I have mentioned Nota uh, a little bit earlier, and this is what I use for mind mapping and brainstorming. So yep, I might wanna launch that from here. And, and if I suddenly did wanna go into a Nota session, and launch that while I'm, you know, standing here at OneNote, kind of trying to think of something. Um, I could do that and go into Nota, do what I was going to do, come right back here to the Windows Mixed Reality Home, go right back to to OneNote. Okay, and then there's vSpatial. I'd mentioned vSpatial, and I click launch here, and this is just going to take me into Steam VR and launch vSpatial. If you want to know more about vSpatial go look at that video and um, check that out. And so again, you know, here's the spatial. Let's wake OneNote back up, right? It's got that little snippet that we've done there. But now this time, um, what I wanna show you is that 
Windows tries to be context aware that when you're clicking in a box, a text entry box, it's going to pop up this keyboard. Uh, the keyboard again is, is you can grab it on these handles on the side, you can move it around. Um, but uh, right at the top, you can see the little microphone icon, right? And that uh, is just a beautiful thing. And I can click on that and it's gonna light up blue. And then, you know, I'm using uh, voice recognition through the microphone on my headset being again sent in and, and uh, uh, generated or, or through uh, the Windows, uh, Windows desktop. And so uh, I've dictated here that the accuracy is, is quite high, very, very good. I rarely, in fact, had an issue as long as I, you know, enunciated and dictated uh, in a still kind of a stilted fashion. Um, it was very, very accurate. And then I'll use it again here, even for searching the web. See, it, it kind of recognized that text box, brought that up and I could, you know, tap out um, uh, on the keyboard, but, in, you know, start dictating. The dictation window comes up and I'm able to actually dictate in what I want to search and press enter. Now, I, I did this purposefully so that you could see that if you do do a search on use speech in Windows Mixed Reality, there is a whole page and dozens and dozens and dozens of commands. Now, one of the things I wanna bring up is this first one here that says select, right? And there's this concept of the gaze cursor, which means there's always this little dot that you kind of noticed in the center of your vision as you're looking around in window. And if you rest that cursor on something and say select, it will, uh, highlight that gaze cursor, and then you will say select again, and then it will invoke the action for whatever it is that you're looking at, right? So if I'm looking at an app and I say select, it will say, oh, okay, gaze cursor's on. It'll turn the gaze cursor on. And then if I say select again, it will launch that particular app that I'm looking at or wake up that window or again, whatever that, that action is. All right, so let's keep this running. Um, you can see, you know, go to start, flashlight on, flashlight on. You can even navigate. You can move forward. You can move backward. You can turn around. You can grab 3D objects and size them. You can close an app, open an app. Uh, <laughs> you can go to all apps. You can take a photo. You can take a video. And I do that. Uh, I've gotten used to doing that a lot uh, with the controls. Um, so there's just a lot here. Um, and I actually intend to, to pin this particular page here on my pinned app so that I could bring it up really quick and kind of get used to, to studying it. And so again, you know, I can bring up the menu and then I can actually say what I want the menu to go do or open or close um, any particular scene. You can see as you rest over the controls, let me see if I can capture that again. As I rest over the controls, you can see right here, it says, say page up. And so you will always be given this choice of the um, controller command, pulling the trigger, or saying page up and you know get the, the same action taken. So I think the more you practice, the more I'm going to practice, the better I'll get at leveraging the voice commands, which will ultimately, again, make me uh, that much more efficient, which is what I'm looking for in being able to work within VR. Now, here we go, I'm opening up uh, Microsoft 365, you know, which is, you know, I have my account. And because this is on my PC, it, um, it kind of remembers who I am. It will remember my logons, uh, which again is, is a uh, advantage. Now in this particular case, I think it had me logged in with my secondary account. So I had to sign in again, but it, you get it. Um, and because Edge saves my passwords, I can get right in. And I can, I, I actually found working in the browser in 365 worked better than trying to pull up the native apps within Windows Mixed Reality. So here I can pull up you know, a blank Word document. I click on it, my uh, keyboard will come up, my in-app keyboard. 
And you can see it says, say, start dictating. And so I can say, start dictating. The uh, little uh, light will light up blue and I can start dictating. And um, again, uh, going through the, the page on using voice control and dictation uh, th will give you so much more information. This isn't intended to be a end all be all uh, tutorial on that, um, but obviously you can do peer, you, you can do punctuations, you can do periods, you can do commas, you can do semicolons, you can do new line, you can do new paragraph, you can do delete that, select that, you can do spell and then spell the word. Um, so, uh, you know, very full featured. And again, I think this is the input um, that that will be default in the future for VR. All right, let's go on and look at some of the customization. And, and you might remember this area that we saw before. And, and they have these, um, uh, let me back up just a bit here. You can see um, they have these little pedestals with these 3D objects on them. Um, I don't own super hot, so I figured I'd take that super hot off of the pedestal. I do have, however, own uh, the blue experience. So I'll take that and put that on that pedestal. And then I'll take the super hot 3D object and then I can get rid of it. And yeah, and then I'll, now I have the blue instead of super hot. And that makes more sense to me in my Windows home. Uh, and, and I could even have gotten rid of the pedestal and the 3D object and put something completely different there if I, if I wanted to. This was just an example that all of these the, the plants, the furniture, the things on the walls, right, are, are kind of put there by Microsoft to give you a sense of how this could look, but you're able to, to kind of totally make this space your own. So now let's jump in. We're back on the roof and we're going to go into the Skyline House. And so you'll see immediately, you know, we're at the Skyline House, a whole different perspective, a whole different skyline. However, you can see that we could jump right back into the cliff house if we wanted to. But these environments are very, very well done. Very modern, open, airy architecture, very plain. And, and it gives you a lot of these walls and spaces where you can kind of make it your own, right? So I can put the edge browser here. I could put the 3D objects here. I could put the My Phone app here if I wanted to. Um, so, you know, any number of ways that I could set up and utilize this space. And, and I found I really kind of enjoyed, even though I wasn't physically moving around, we all know how VR affects and impacts our, our brains. I felt like I was kind of moving around in these very nice airy places and I could kind of move things around. And I've put these four big screens here. Um, where I could sit back and I have my mail and I have another browser and I have uh, my office documents and I have my calendar. So you can see, you know, they give you these, these blank slates um, where you could do kind of anything you want with them and then, you know, continue to work uh, as you might want uh, wherever. That's, that 3D object actually takes you into the um, uh, the tutorial, the Windows Mixed Reality tutorial, I needed to get rid of that, and just didn't do it here. So you kind of see you have this great view, you're in the middle of a harbor, you know, I have Maps app. And you can see again, you know, this is using your Windows desktop. So however you might see it or, or messages you might get within your Windows desktop, you're going to get here in Windows Mixed Reality. Um, so yeah, I could, and there's even two more blank slates there. I could put stuff up against the windows, how, wherever, however I want to work, um, I'm able to do it here in the skyline house, just like I can in the cliff house. And this was just an example that I, as I was doing these recordings, um, one of the things I did was get a couple of screenshots and because I've connected my, my phone and I'm allowing certain notifications to come up on my desktop, they are also passed through into Windows Mixed Reality. In fact, uh, I was playing Medal of Honor above and beyond um, at one point and a, a, a notification came in while I was playing. Now I can turn those notifications off, um, but I, you know, that was just one of those gee whiz things that was like, 
you know, wow, I can stay connected to other things that are going on while I'm in these virtual worlds, even if I'm gaming. And that might not be something that I'm able to do on some of the other platforms. So I thought that was really, really cool. All right, so here we are at the VR for work assessment model. And, um, you know, it probably came through, I probably show it in my voice when I'm really excited about a platform. And, and I've got to say, you know, I, I really found a lot that, that spoke to me from a productivity standpoint um, with Windows Mixed Reality. So here in the production and efficiency, man, and flow, uh, I, I'm there. I, I think it's probably, I can't go out on the limb, it's probably the best platform I might imagine if what you're doing is accessing your PC or laptop resources in an HMD, it is probably the best platform you can get right now for productivity. And, and, and I'm, I'm ready to, to hear from you, um, the audience, on what you think about that. If you've used it, if you've not used it, if you're skeptical, um, you know, uh, I'm certainly open and eager to hear from you. I really, really found it great. Now, there are shortcomings, right? You get down here to social and collaboration. Well, that is that is not what you do here, right? It's, it is uh, solitary, just like you might be in your office by yourself uh, working on your, your computer. Um, social and collaboration, you'll notice, right? They had uh, alt space, right? That's their platform. Um, they want you to go to alt space for social and collaborative functions. But you can also launch out of Windows Mixed Reality and go to places like Engage or utilize tools like the Spatial, which allows you to meet with up to 16 other folks, right? So there are apps that will allow you to do that right from within uh, Windows Mixed Reality. And then you get to the value proposition. Well, Wow, you already own it, right? If you have a Windows machine, um, you're really just talking about the, the price of, of a headset. And in the case of something like um, the HP Reverb G2, which arguably is the top Windows Mixed Reality headset out right now, um, it, that's a, a $600 investment. Um, so, Wow, yeah, I think, you know, uh, I can't say it's free, right? You, you do need a, a, a pretty good high-end device to run VR and you need your headset. But in terms of needing other software to do things within the headset, I think, again, this is the only platform where you really don't need uh, additional things in order to leverage VR and do work. Um, do solitary individual work that requires desktop. Now, input, it, 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 you know, the input question will come up because, yeah, uh, voice recognition is great for structured input. So things that I do, like documents, uh, even to a degree on PowerPoints, uh, somewhat within Excel, you can navigate, you can do some of that. Um, but if you're doing things like programming, or unstructured data entry, that's gonna be really, really tough to accomplish. There's no good input mechanism, um, keyboard input mechanism that I'm aware of for Windows Mixed Reality. And remember, Windows Mixed Reality takes over your desktop. So I can't even do it at the desktop, reach out, and if I was good enough a touch typer, use my keyboard and mouse to provide input. And so there is a gotcha there, right? That you don't have a really good um, keyboard type input mechanism uh, to, to get unstructured data in if you're using Windows Mixed Reality. So it's not ideal for somebody like a programmer uh, probably to use. But outside of that, I think lots of opportunity, lots of value here in um, Windows Mixed Reality. Okay, well, that's it for today. Thank you uh, for joining us here at XR for Work. We really appreciate you. We hope you'll join us over on the Facebook page, on Twitter. 
um, check out our new website, xrforwork.com. And in the meantime, until our next episode, we'll see you in the metaverse. Bye now. <laughs>